Good Wednesday morning for our five-minute devotion. We've started talking about eternity, and of course, when a Christian thinks of eternity, he thinks of heaven, and uh, an unconverted man needs to keep in mind a real and existent hell. So there's uh, two different places that we go when we die. Uh, there's no middle ground. There's no purgatory. There's nothing of that nature, uh, not in biblical orthodoxy at least. And uh, in some men's minds, there's holding places and things of this nature, but that's just not the case. Peter told us that he was, he was talking about the end of the world that we know it, how the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, he says in Second Peter chapter 3, he tells us that he's long-suffering to usward, speaking to the Christians, not willing that any should perish. He's not going to let any of his sheep perish. Um, that's what he's saying. That's, this is not a universalist verse. He said, but that all should come to repentance. He's talking about the believers, the elect, um, contextually. It's not difficult to figure that out. But then he says this, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, She'll be burned up. I mean, this this day of the Lord sounds pretty serious. Coming as a thief in the night. In other words, when we least expect it. Seeing then, he says, that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Now, the misconception of many is that I've got to live a good, perfect life in order to get to heaven. And it's not what he's saying here. He's not saying that since you understand that the world is going to be uh, that's going to pass away with a great noise and the elements are going to melt with a fervent heat and the earth and the works therein are going to be burned up, you would better act right. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying understanding that this is what God is going to do with all of the created order, seeing that you understand these things. What kind of person ought you be in your Christian holy conversation and godliness? How ought you to be living? You ought to be gospel-centered. You ought to be obedient to the scriptures, all these things. It just makes sense. He said there's an eternity coming is what he's declaring. And it's not one that is uh, soul sleep. It's not one that we're just going to drift off into nothingness and know nothing about eternity. It is a real thing. He goes on to say, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements uh, shall melt with a fervent heat. He's asking this as a question. He's saying, what kind of person should you be looking for and hasting to the coming of the day of God? How ought we be living? We ought to be living faithfully. It's just, it's just the implied idea here. There's an eternity coming, and we need to be living faithfully today because what we do today does matter. It does not matter for our salvation. Remember, he's talking to the saved. But as true believers... Our life ought to be marked with someone looking for his coming. In fact, verse 13, he said, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what we're looking for. This world today doesn't have a lot of righteousness dwelling in it, does it? In fact, all we have to do is flip on the news and see corruption, murder, thievery, adultery, fornications, every kind of willful serving of the flesh is obvious. But there is an eternity coming. And as believers, those, as he said in there, that he's not slack concerning his promise to usward, to usward, to us as believers, he's not slack concerning that. He's not willing that any of us should perish, but that we would all come to repentance. And seeing then that everything we have around us is going to dissolve, how should we be living? Because we're looking for, according to his promise, toward a new heavens and a new earth. Tomorrow we're going to talk about where, where's that promise at and exactly what does he mean by that? Um, is, this, is this going to be like the Jehovah's Witnesses who believe that we're going to inherit the earth and pet lions and walk around and be in the Garden of Eden. Let's see what God has to say about that. See you tomorrow.